Or there was on some shit that I wanted to be on, and when I got on that shit, I got on it, then surpassed the man. Damn, how the fuck you gonna? You ain't even born. You not even practicing what you preach, my nigga. What the fuck is you doing? Great rapper, writer, he's a model. Playboy Cardi is here. That's you, Playboy Cardi. Jordan Terrell Carter was born on September 13, 1996, and he grew up in the nearby suburb of Riverdale, Georgia. Even though he grew up in a suburb, Riverdale was known for its more higher crime rates. Plus, Jordan was a very hard-headed kid at the time, and he wouldn't listen to anyone. And the only interest Jordan really had at the time was going to the league in basketball, but that wouldn't work out all as planned. As I said before, Jordan was a very hard-headed kid. This would really be around the time where Jordan would really start ducking school, not go to practice, and if he did go to practice, he would smoke before, and he said he was smoke before practice and drop about 30 points and from these clips that might actually have been true the hoop star i had hoop dreams i was young ai and then go to practice that was the time when i was like really like ducking like scoring like it was really hoop life no rap like i was really on the court balling like really balling been balling i was just doing other shit i should smoke before i go to practice get on the court drop like 30 on niggas like crazy like i had the city going wow Jordan would actually get into an argument with his coach after trying to explain that he wanted to spend more time on music. At first, Cardi never actually took music seriously. He would sometimes freestyle with his family for fun and they would throw $1 bills on him to hype him up, but it was really nothing serious. But these little jokes would actually start something great. While Cardi was just making music for fun, his friends would tell him to make some real music. He would then download a software on his computer that goes by the name of GarageBand and he would record his first song called Cry. And when he would drop this song, his name would be Sir Cartier. He would get this name from the jewelry Cartier. But when he recorded Cry, he probably didn't have very good equipment at the time. So you can really barely hear his voice on the song and the beat just really overlaps it. And he would get so in love with music that he would literally skip class just to record. And this would be where the lying from Cardi would begin. October 3rd, 2012, Cardi would announce when he would drop his first mixtape, Young Misfits. It was announced to drop October 31st of 2012, which would be Halloween, which wouldn't actually happen. But it would drop on November 12th of 2012. As we all know, Cardi isn't only into music, but he's also into fashion. Young Misfits would get a bit of traction and would give a boost in Sir Cartier's career. Around this time, Cardi would work at an H&M and he would actually quit due to being embarrassed to people noticing him. Not only that, he knew that music would be what he would do for the rest of his life, so he just said, I don't need a job. And by this time, Cardi would have changed his name from Sir Cartier to Playboy Cardi. He would just shorten the Cardi because obviously it sounded better, but he got the Playboy part because a girl gave it to him. And he would also start fresh on a new SoundCloud account with his new name, Playboy Cardi. But from this time moving forward, this would just be time for Cardi to work on his craft. August 4th of 2012 would see the song and music video release of Steez. I really wanted to talk about this because you can really see the improvement of Cardi's music. Because before Steez, we would talk about Cry, and Cry was not really good. Around this time, Cardi also took a lot of inspiration from Tyler the Creator, and also an Ouchia music video in the song, you can really see the improvement. In 2014, Cardi will find a partner to work with and he goes by the name of Ethereal. 
Ethereal was very picky with who he worked with, but Cardi's friend spoke highly of him. Cardi told Ethereal that he wanted to hear some unique beats and no trap, and from there and forward, they were making a lot of music together. Ethereal would then introduce Cardi to Father, who was actually the founder of an underground label at the time named Awful Records. After Cardi met Father, Father would want to hear Cardi's music, and the only song that he had up on his new SoundCloud was called Young Zanho. After Father heard this, he knew that Cardi was onto something, and he wanted to sign him to Awful Records. Other songs like Talk, which was produced by Ethereal, would really be ahead of its time. In 2014, Cardi would meet another producer that goes with the name of Mexico Dro. And their chemistry when working is just really unmatched. Mexico Dro would produce songs for Cardi like Drug Boy, which if you don't already know, it's very legendary to the SoundCloud era and just in general. But once again, from this time moving forward, Cardi would just work on more of his craft and improve. <laughs> Cardi having a buzz in the underground, he will meet a well friend that goes with the name of Ian Connor. And if you don't know who Ian Connor is, he's a stylist and fashion influencer. But he will contribute to Cardi's career by really giving Cardi's fan base a boost. Examples would be basically Ian posting everything that Cardi did on his Twitter and really marketing him. And they will actually build such a good relationship that Ian will actually become Cardi's manager. And with this happening, Cardi will part ways with Awful Records. But with Ian Connor being such a big influencer, Cardi will actually get connections from Ian Connor. And that important connection that I'm talking about is ASAP Rocky. And Ian Connor Connor would actually introduce Cardi to ASAP Rocky at South by Southwest. ASAP Rocky had told Cardi that he had listened to some of his music and that he liked it. And on April 2nd, 2015, Cardi would drop a SoundCloud classic that goes by the name of Broke Boy. And actually, within a month, the song would actually get a million plays. Just a month after dropping Broke Boy, Cardi would go ahead and drop his next song, Fetty, which would actually be another classic. And after Cardi dropping these two classics, this would lead him to being signed to ASAP Mob. And in October of that year, Cardi would announce that you will be signing to ASAP Mob. And all these accomplishments would really put Cardi on the map of SoundCloud. And a little bit after being signed to ASAP Mob, Ian Connor would then tweet that there will be a new Cardi tape coming soon. But you know, as you could guess, that really never happened. And matter of fact, he really only dropped about two songs for a long period of time. And that would be What and v Lone Thug featuring Uno the Activist. With Cardi ghosting us, he wouldn't do it for for no reason, but he has something special planned for us. But let's go a little bit back on the date. In 2015, Cardi would move to New York once he realized that he would pursue music for the rest of his life. And while in New York, he would stay at his drug dealer's house. And around this time, Cardi would not have been signed to ASAP Mob. And somebody that was already in ASAP that goes to the name of ASAP Bari would also go to the same house as Cardi. And one time while Bari was at the drug dealer's house, he would hear Cardi's music playing and he would be so amazed from how good it sounded. Later on that day, he would put out on Twitter a tweet, where is Playboy Cardi? Cardi would then get back to ASAP Bari and they were really locked in. But what's really important about all of this is that in the midst of this happening, ASAP Bari would play Uzi some of Cardi's music. And this will start the beginning of 1629. Their actual official release will be Left Right and this will lead to the Left Right tour. But to build up some hype for his debut album, he dropped two songs, both featuring Lil Uzi that go by the name of Woke Up Like This and Lookin'. And both tracks will be produced by Pierre Bourne. And just a month after dropping these songs, on April 14th of 2017, he would drop his debut album self-titled like any other album the album had a lot of mixed reviews whenever it first dropped but for the people that actually liked the album they would say it would transcend them to a different universe for me i really like this album and it will be my second favorite cardi album right behind whole lot of red and my favorite song off of self-titled will for sure be location but the one song off of this album that would really catapult cardi's career would go by the name of magnolia this song would have the internet and a chokehold within new york and millie rock part having its own dance and magnolia would really be responsible for bringing cardi to the main Stream. Cardi would go ghost on us again, but he would show up on Cozy Tay by ASAP Mob. I had like three pair of brass, bro. And with pair of shoes, no, nah, pairs of those, I had every colorway. Every colorway, bro. Every the other ones. I had to throw them, I threw them all away. The new, you see now? The red one. I got Yeah. <laughs> 
Yearborn would tweet that Playboy Cardi's album was done and just a little bit after, Playboy Cardi would drop Love Hurts featuring Travis Scott and just a month later, he would drop his album Dial It and the album would debut at number 3 in the US which would once again be another one for Cardi. And after Die Lit, Cardi would instantly go to Twitter to announce another album called Whole Lot of Red, but he would have left his fan hanging for about two years without saying anything. He had a few tweets here and there, but for all we knew, he could be lying. But one special day on December 24th of 2020, Cardi would go on IG Live to preview some songs for his album. And as you could guess, people would tell him to drop it. And surprisingly, on December 25th of 2020, Cardi would drop his album Whole Lot of Red. This album would have a lot of mixed reviews with a lot of people saying that they waited two years for complete dog shit. But the album would actually perfectly age over time with people realizing that the sound was so different and it was something that we needed. With my favorite songs for sure being Over, Vamp Anthem, and Stop Breathing. But for one last album, the name of this album would be Narcissist or Music. And at this point, I'm pretty sure nobody really knows the name of the album. Cardi has been teasing us and giving us signs that he's going to be dropping music by doing things like dropping merch and tweeting on Twitter. But the real question is, are you ready for new Playboy Cardi? And this is the end of the rise of Playboy Cardi. Not even on no fake YouTuber stuff. Thank y'all all for the recent support on the recent videos. And don't forget to click the link to my bios to my socials. Thank y'all once again.